Good morning. Welcome to this presentation with Vargis Timber. My name is Bendikte and I work as an analyst at ABG. Allow me to introduce Anders Marklund, CFO at Vargis Timber. Please go ahead, Anders. Thank you, Meredikte, and good morning to all of you. And uh, welcome to this presentation of Berg's. I will today give a presentation of Berg's uh, current operations, and I will also touch on our strategic direction going forward. And finally, I will also give some head, uh, heads up on, on, uh, on the financials, and I will also uh, give some comments on the current uh, market situation, and especially on the effects from, from the tragic assault on, on Ukraine. So let's get started. Um, for those who have followed Berks over the years, you have seen a quite a big transformation of the company the last four years, from being just a pure sawmill company with uh, plants in southeast Sweden. We now are a different company, a company with a broader product portfolio that I will describe today. And the listed parent company, Berks Timber, is an active owner and owns uh, and develops companies within the wood sector. We have a very decentralized business model with independent subsidiaries with clear responsibilities for operations, financial strategy, and so on. We have operations in three product areas. That is wood protection, it's joinery, and it's sawn wood. And we have a clear growth agenda also that will be fulfilled by organic growth through investments, but also looking into acquisitions and also be part of innovations within the wood sector. And uh, we have some guiding principles as a steering model for our group. As I said, we have a decentralized business uh, units, and that should, those should be characterized by entrepreneurship, simplicity and speed, and continuous improvement. We don't talk that much about synergies in our, in our group between the, our companies, but we are very eager to learn from our colleagues and, and uh, by examples. And if it's good between the companies, they are allowed to work together and should work together. We are not imposing big group projects uh, as a rule. Looking at the operations that they are currently, we have eight independent companies in Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, and the UK. We have production at nine manufacturing sites. We have about 1,000 employees in those countries. Net sales for last year amounted to a little bit more than 3 billion, with a very good profitability. We had an EBITDA of about 500 million, given a margin of 16.5, which is a record year for Berg's uh, over the all years. And due to the good profit and also the, the cash flows, we have a very low leverage in our group. Our net debt to EBITDA ratio is uh, 0.14, and that gives us a very good platform to develop the company in the strategic direction that we have decided on. Looking at our product uh, spectrum, you can see a lot of different products. It's sawn wood, it doors, windows. We have cladding, decking, pallets, heating logs, garden products, furniture, houses, and also aftermarket services related to those products. And comparing these uh, product groups as we looked four years ago, then we just would have three of those products, so it's a definite uh, development of the group the, since, uh, since the last four years. Uh, as I mentioned, we have operations in three products groups, and the biggest one uh, based on sales last year is wood protection, with 44% of net sales. Uh, then we have joinery segment, and within joinery we have windows and doors, we have garden products, and we have houses. Then we have sawn wood, 35% of net sales. And then we have two sawmills, one in Latvia and one in Estonia. In addition to those three core product areas, we also have one uh, area with energy, energy and logistics, meaning that we have a pellet factory. And we also have a port operation outside London in the UK. 
We have talked uh, many, many years about uh, the advantages with building wood and using wood for, for many applications. But now we can see a clear trend that things are happening. There is definitely an increasing interest from uh, designers, architects, but also for, from, uh, from uh, constructors and building companies to use wood as building material. And that is also due that there have been a lot of innovations in building techniques to build with wood. Previously, we build, built uh, buildings for with two or three or four floors. But today we are building, at least in Sweden and Norway, up to maybe 20 floors. So it's definitely an, a big improvement in, in using wood as a building material. And that will continue for sure. And wood is also a very renewable and sustainable material with a high substitution effects compared to other building materials. And one interesting uh, fact is uh, this is graph shows the price development for different building materials, where you can see a significant uh, price increases from 1990 for steel and concrete, which are the main building materials today. But we have seen uh, wood being really, really flat over the years. But last two years we have seen a significant increase in wood, of course, for many reasons. But definitely one reason is that we see an increasing interest to, to use wood in the building sector. And we hope that the wood will establish a more higher uh, platform uh, going forward. So increasing wood consumption and interest for wood. That gives us also a very good platform to, to develop company in according to our strategy for growth and profitability. And this uh, graph shows the illustration how we see the growth where we are today. We see a big contribution for wood protection. We see a contribution also for rolling out timber windows internationally, which I will describe very soon. We see an uh, increase in garden products. We see a lesser growth in uh, sawmills, mainly due to the restrictive uh, raw material supply. And we also see a contribution from innovation that we will actively participate in. And looking at the different product areas, we can see what activities we should do to enable to reach those uh, targets. In wood protection, it's a lot about uh, investing for organic growth in our uh, production units, but also participate in acquisitions and also working actively in, in the market using more digi digital uh, devices and uh, being more active in the marketing activities, especially in our main uh, sales channels, which is the builders, merchants and DIY chains. And in joinery, we see a clear uh, potential to grow uh, our timber windows concept. I will be back to that very soon. We should also build capacity and secure supply for that expansion. And that also might lead to, to acquisitions in that area. And we will also here work with design, digitalization and, and marketing development, not least with the digital uh, devices and to visualize our products uh, in a very good way. Uh, within Sawn Wood, we see mostly uh, improvements in efficiency and productivity. Uh, the winning concept in, in the saw wood and sawmills are actually to be a low cost producer, to be long term competitive. And we're also looking into to uh, expand the, the operations also with some further processing uh, from the sawmills. And then lastly, uh, participate in R&D and innovation. And one example of that is uh, the stake we have just uh, uh, acquired in uh, wood tube, which is a stud made from paper for interior walls and then the furniture frames. And that is environmentally friendly, of course, and uh, very appreciated by, by carpenters also, instead of using sharp steel uh, studs and so on. So that's an example of innovation. So looking into wood protection, what is wood protection? Yeah, that is kind of applications that we, we use for, for mainly construction. 
and it's treated uh, against uh, moist uh, water, fire, and so on. And the biggest product group within wood protection is some kind of construction frames, uh, for example, uh, stress graded C24, CLS, TR26, for those who uh, know those standards. And then we have decking, which most of you have used by yourselves, building uh, decking around your house or a summer house. And then we have uh, different kinds of outdoor claddings. We also have uh, fire protection uh, that we see a very good growth potential in, especially when we are building more in wood. The need for fire protection is increasing and that we are looking into and uh, see very good potential. And the focus in this area is to grow the organic uh, growth through investments and also moving to more speciality products with higher margins. As I mentioned, it is uh, fire protection. We also have a known product that is linseed impregnated with very good characteristics and different colors and uh, very popular in the market at the moment. Joinery consists of uh, uh, windows and doors, which is the biggest, biggest segment with the joinery, about 60% of the sales in the segment. Uh, then we have garden products, which is about 30% of, of sales in the segment. And with garden products, we mean uh, fences, stairs, sitting groups, and swimming pools, for example. By the way, we are selling 11,000 swimming pools to France last year, so we are a very big uh, supplier of swimming pools. And lastly, we have house production with a modern uh, house production facility in Latvia, and that stands about 10% of sales in, within the segment. Focus here definitely to, to grow the windows and doors segment, especially with the acquisition we made last year in June in the UK but also to participate in, in acquisitions in the other areas. And the windows and door segment, uh, the biggest market for that is uh, UK for us. And here we are talking about bespoke windows and doors, not standard sortiment. Every single unit is uh, custom made and ordered from, from, uh, from the consumers. And in the UK, we are working under the trademark Timber Windows with a network over the UK with a lot of showrooms to, to, to visualize our products to the customers. And here we see a very good growth potential. And in the UK, as I said, we have 44 showrooms around England, especially the south area, including London. Uh, we are owning eight of those by ourselves, by 36 of them are, uh, or 38 of them are uh, uh, through a franchise uh, kind of network. This is a typical uh, showroom. Uh, this is uh, just outside London. And the concept of uh, timber windows is uh, very scalable. Therefore, we see a um, clear potential to take this internationally from, from the UK, even though the, the growth in the UK is, is still there. We are looking into uh, Europe, we're looking into Scandinavia, and even to the east coast of, of, of the US. And the first step taking this internationally, we will open two showrooms in Sweden now during March. One will be open in um, in uh, Salzgebaden in Stockholm, and the other one in Hovås in uh, Gothenburg. So we're really looking forward to that. And uh, Sonwood is our two sawmills. The biggest one, which stands for about 80% of the sales within Sonwood, is uh, in Latvia, Vikavod. It's a very highly effective and one of the most modern sawmills in, in, uh, in, in the Baltics and in Europe, I would say, uh, with high profitability over time, and mostly directed to industrial customers, where Japan is a big market for, for glue, glue lamb uh, production. And the uh, smaller sawmill we have in uh, Estonia, and that is mostly directed to supply our uh, wood protection unit in Latvia, where about half of the production goes to, to, 
to that production unit. So it's a smaller sawmill with a smaller uh, sortiment. Our financial targets, we should have a growth of about 10% over a business cycle with a margin of over 9%. We should have a financial debt uh, lower than equity, and we have a dividend policy that should be 25 to 40% of uh, net profit for the year. And uh, we uh, decided on this in March last year, precisely a year ago, when we uh, revised the growth and uh, EBITDA margin and raised those targets compared to the previous uh, targets, showing our ambition to, to, to grow and work with the profitability. And if we look at the, uh, the outcome of the last years compared to the financial targets, uh, we see the net sales increase 42% last year. We had an extremely good profitability last year, well uh, above the, the target. We have last year's made dividends according to, to our uh, uh, dividend policy, except for 19 with the corona crisis. And we have a very low leverage, as I mentioned before. And uh, looking at, uh, at the short summary of the outcome for 2021, as I said, we, it was a rock record year with uh, very strong market conditions. And the net sales was increased by 42% to a little bit more than 3 billion. We had an organic growth of 34% and acquisition of 8%, and that was the, the Windows and Door company in the UK. EBITDA a little bit more than 500 million, given a margin of 16.5. A significant increase compared to last year. And this uh, increase was mainly attributable to higher sales prices within wood protection and, and sawmills, but also higher volumes in the joiner segment that contributed uh, positively. But we, in that segment, also noted higher costs for input materials and also disturbances in the transport sector that hit the margin a bit compared to, to previous years. Uh, we had a lower margin in Q4 last year, but still on very good levels. Remember that Q2 and Q3 is uh, seasonal in the best quarters for us, and they were heavily affected by, by very good market conditions. But we are still on very good margins historically. And we also proposed a dividend of uh, 30 euro to our shareholders. Uh, whilst we had a very good uh, result, the uh, cash flow was not uh, corresponding to that. But that was mainly due to higher working capital as uh, the prices uh, to the customers and also our input prices increased. And that means uh, higher debtors and higher stock levels. Uh, so that's fully normal uh, due to those factors. But given that, our leverage is still very, very low. So we have good financial ability to, to develop the group in our, in our strategy. So, <clears throat> looking at, uh, at the coming uh, periods, what are our view of, of the market uh, conditions? As we communicated in Q4, we said we see a continued positive demand for wood products, and that's still valid. Uh, we have strong order books for uh, next year, and that's related to our joinery products. Uh, doors and windows are sold out the next six months. We also have uh, good order books for, for the garden uh, segment and also the house production. We also noted that we will have higher raw material costs within the wood protection and joiner segments. Um, and that uh, we see that we can compensate that by, by increased prices. And it will also be compensated by a very good performance from a sawmills that still ha have uh, very, very good margins, as the raw material cost has not increased uh, in comparison to the sales prices. So that is still valid. The new parameter that has come the last weeks is, of course, the tragic attack on, on Ukraine. And how will that affect us is, of course, an irrelevant uh, question. And uh, we have no sales at all to, to Russia, Belarus, or Ukraine, or that area. Uh, our sawmills are uh, not buying any saw logs from log those countries. All supply are in uh, Baltics and from Scandinavia, Sweden, and Norway. 
however, we have some supply to our wood protection unit in the Baltics or in Latvia, to be specific, like uh, most uh, companies in that region. So we have supply from Russia and Belarus. And that will, long, that will not uh, be anymore. So that we are working hardly now with uh, alternative sourcing. So we will be able to increase our internal supplies from our sawmills. But we're also looking externally, of course, of, of alternative suppliers. And that work is ongoing and we will communicate when we have some information about that and the effects that we can uh, you know, quantify. And how will this affect the wood market in general? Yeah, we can see that uh, Europe is cons cons consumption about 100 million cubic meters of wood a year. And the supply from uh, Russia, uh, Belarus and uh, Ukraine is about 7 to 8 million. So it's less than 10%. But we should keep in mind that the balance between supply and demand is, is a fine line in this business. And, uh, this might have an effect on, 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 on the wood market, or it will have an effect on the wood market. But this is a big puzzle of uh, selling prices. It will uh, also put pressure on, on the raw material prices and the transport availability and costs. And you maybe also heard from Lennart before the Rotneros that how that will affect the pulp and the pulp market and also the pulp uh, wood market. So it's a puzzle that needs to be laid and we'll be back uh, as soon as we have some more information about how this will affect Berks. So my final slide is uh, our message. Uh, these are three areas of high priority. We should build capacity for organic growth, but also always looking at uh, acquisitions. We should, should accelerate the digital journey. And we should strengthen our product development and aftermarket services. And also, also all of this is, is to, to, to move in the value chain and uh, increase the, the margins over time. So by that, thank you for listening. Thank you, Anish, for an uh, interesting presentation. Uh, I think we have time for one or two questions, so we can take a very short Q&A. And my first question is related to the joinery segment. Mm -hmm. You have acquired two companies uh, last year. Could you elaborate about the strategy behind this acquisition? And also, what potential do you see from these companies now going forward? Yes, as you mentioned, we made two acquisitions, or one acquisition last year and one in January this year, within the windows and door segment in the UK. And the reason for that was uh, as we have our production unit of windows and doors in Latvia, and the UK is one of the, our major markets. And actually the, buyer, the, the company we bought was a big customer to our uh, production company. So that was an uh, integration going forward. And uh, that was the rationale for that. And now we see when we have learned the company and the management, we see a very good growth potential in, uh, within this uh, uh, segment. As the UK market for windows and doors is uh, very, very big. And especially the segment we are into as bespoke doors and windows uh, with very high quality. So there we see a growth potential. And the company we bought in uh, January this year actually owns three of the showrooms that I showed earlier in the network. And that gives us also a very good platform to, uh, to uh, open uh, platforms in central London based on the platform of that company. So it's an integration going forward, and uh, we see a good potential in that. Mm. Interesting. And also related to organic growth, <clears throat> you have previously stated that wood protection and joinery uh, that you aim to grow within. But which type of product categories within these two segments do you see uh, the most interesting going forward, forward relating to growth? Yes, as I mentioned, uh, the big part of, of the wood protection products are, are a little bit more of standard sortiment, and that will always be the base. 
but the growth we see in more specialities. As I mentioned, we see fire protection as a very interesting area. We also invested uh, quite a lot of in the production facility in Sweden last year for, for the linseed uh, uh, impregnation. That has very good exterior looks and uh, very well received by the market. And we also see service concepts and working with the digital uh, journey. And uh, that allows us also grow into more, uh, more uh, uh, high margin products. And we should also investigate the possibility of e-commerce also within this area. So definitely going from the more standard sortiment to the more specialities. <coughs> Thank you, Anders. And I think our time is running up now. Thank you very much for presenting for us today and taking the time to answering all of our questions. And also thank you to all who listened in today. Thank you for listening.